Um, how connectivity is transforming us and the society we live in. I think connectivity and digitalization has actually maybe not transformed us, but changed us. And I want to illustrate it with a personal question. What is the first thing you touch in the morning when you wake up? And please, I don't want to know. It's just a rhetoric question. <laughs> um, but probably it's the alarm clock on your mobile phone. And if you're a smartphone user in Sweden, more than 30% of the users start using internet, and then they get out of bed. And it's fascinating for me, working for Ericsson, suddenly people are not using the mobile phone for talking, they are using the mobile phone for surfing the net, updating Facebook, etc., etc even in bed, and actually when people go to bed, 50% of the Swedes are using the internet on the mobile phone, and then they fall asleep. So actually, we as individuals has changed. We have changed the behavior, because now we are connected 24-7, and as other speakers have talked about, we are more and more time and space independent. Now we can reach information, we can reach knowledge, we can reach our peers independent of time and space. But the real profound change on a global scale is actually that our culture is changing in a dramatic way. Now we are much more collaborative. We are sharing, as we have heard from other speakers, information and knowledge. And we are much more active in both the consumption and the production of knowledge. And we are living in a culture defined by increased openness. And then, for the first time in history now, we have a generation that has grown up with mobile phones and the internet as a nat <coughs> natural part of their childhood. We call them digital natives, and of course, me, close to 50, I feel a uh, digital immigrant maybe, but still, I think it's, this will have a profound change on society. When digital natives are starting to innovate, getting their new jobs, changing big organizations like Ericsson to work in a different way, and on a global scale, we feel much more empowered. The digital natives, um, it's both pros and cons with them. Uh, this is a picture from my home, actually. I have a son that is 15 years old and he loves football. So every bloody Saturday, this happens. Instead of watching one match on one TV screen, he watches four games at the same time. And it gives me a headache. Where was tips extra? One game, that's it. But he wants to watch all the games. And then he has a text messaging alert. So he receives 15 seconds because it's delay on IPTV. 15 seconds he receives, OK, scoring in that game, let's switch uh, channels on the TV or the laptop or the iPad. And it's not a nice experience for me, but still, of course, he, he is quite natural to this. It's, why bother, Daddy? This is how he consumes media. But it's not only individuals that has changed. It has with technology to do, because Marshall McLuhan said once, we become what we behold. First we shape the tools, and then the tools shape us. So it's quite interesting to see how Technology has changed and will change. Uh, of course, in 1998, IBM G5 was the most powerful computer you could buy commercially. Some 13 years later, our mobile phones are twice as powerful. And of course, 2012, we had three times more. So now we are actually, on a global scale, walking around with a mainframe computer in our pockets. And looking at flash storage, 4 gig, 8 gigs, 32 gigs a year later, and then you came up with 128 gig in 2009. And then this fascinating thing happens. Um, 
And my thinking, how did they think? Imagine you sitting on the airplane to the US, and you need to get some files, and you pick up your knife. <laughs> Four seconds later, you will have a Magnum 44 up in your face. But still, what's interesting with this is that even a Swiss knife manufacturer needs to relate to the digital world. Even the most basic, old-fashioned Swiss company needs to have a digital strategy. And I think that is fascinating, how more and more companies are thinking about how can I be relevant in the future and what kind of things do I need to do even if my core business is in knives. And of course, our core technology will also develop. So by 2014 or 2015, you will have a theoretical downlink on one gigabyte in your mainframes, in your computers. And of course, that will profoundly change what kind of services we can offer, what kind of services other industries will offer to you as consumers as well as business to business. So digitalization and connectivity has a profound impact on society and enterprises because now we have the power of the cloud and the power of the crowd. And of course, no one is more intelligent than everyone. So the crowd and together with the cloud is transformative and we will see lots of new innovations. And now we see as much upstream innovations from end users, small companies, as well as downstream stream innovations from large companies. We have information everywhere, and we have this culture of sharing. And I have really high hopes on that we can address some of the real problems and innovate to make this world a better place. And suddenly you can organize without having an organization, because the net allows you to do it. And suddenly, with communities, with peer groups, you can make, even if you're alone, innovations happen together in collaboration with others. And what's more fascinating is that we see emergence of new currencies, which changes the business model, which changes the framework of innovation and also Internet of Things, the next thing, machine-to-machine -machine communication, which will have new applications. Suddenly, you can solve old problems with new technologies and really make a game change. Collaboration and creativity and new currencies. My company thinks about money, assets, equity, liability. Most companies do. But what we see with creative individuals change, making innovations in apps or open source or ho open hardware is that maybe they are not primarily looking for financial capital. They are looking and get their kick out of social capital or emotional capital with likes, with everything. So what we have now is a profound change in what people think is valuable and what makes them innovate. It's not the business case. It's the social value or the emotional value to make a difference in the world. And that is why I see that we will see so much change in the future happening by creative individuals that can use the hardware, can use the software to actually make a difference. And then, of course, Internet of Things. It's not only about consumer electronics, photo frames, devices that, be, uh, that will be connected. What we see now is full industries thinking about, can we network a container? Can we network sea transport? Can we change the logic of tr transport and logistics thanks to technology going down in price, high-speed broadband, low latency? How can we utilize the network to make smart grids? How can we change healthcare, how it's distributed and how it's performed by using broadband technology to change the way we do healthcare? And also, in the future, we will have sensors being invisible for everyone, but being a part in the management of the city or being a part of the management of farming. Measuring things, sensors, controllers, and being networked for changing the logic on how farming or how we run the city. So I think 
connectivity is a profound force to get convergence be between products, technologies, and industries. And I think broadband and connectivity will be used by all activities in society in some way. They will distribute and use digital services to serve the citizens in the city, to serve patients in a healthcare situation in a different way. And I hope that this event will be the starting point where we actually innovate for a better world, where we address questions like climate change, aging population, how can we use digital services and connectivity to give a better life for aging population at the same time lowering the, lowering the cost. How can we use sensors, connectivity and broadband to actually address the question of scarce resources like water, power, raw material, food. Put sensors in the soil, optimizing the water consumption for farming. At the same time, using the sensors to actually measure if the soil needs fertilization. Public sector efficiency, healthcare, education, safety. Everything will be transformed by digitalization, networking, and connectivity. We will see new types of devices. We will see new types of educational systems, just like Mark Smith talked about. We will see how mobile money could be a part of actually addressing poverty. Because suddenly we can bank the unbanked and they can save money. We can think about containers being connected and giving healthcare to remote areas where it has been impossible earlier to give high quality healthcare. And we can think about how will sensors and connectivity transform traffic in this case by connected stoplights, connected ambulances, and the ambulance during emergency always gets a green light. Things will happen and my message to you is that change will never be as slow, it is, as, as, slow as it is today. And what we need in turbulent times is a vision. And I talked to Rosa Betmos Kanter and she said this about a vision. A vision is not just a picture of what could be. It's an appeal to our best selves, meaning addressing local, regional and global challenges, being, making a better world. And also, it's a call to become something more, to be more global, to address the challenges. Thank you very much. Thank you.